Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I want to announce our first ever photo challenge. You know it had to be street photography, right? Uh, this is the result of a confluence of conversations, books, camera reviews, and finally my very recent, very personal experience shooting images like this. And this. I think street photography is hard on multiple levels. The good news is that the challenge is being sponsored by our friends at B&H. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate the support, but you already knew that. The winner will receive a Rugged Legion 45 messenger bag, and I'll put a link to the bag in the show notes down below. But before I get into the challenge details, a word from our friendly neighborhood. Tension between art and commerce department. First, we'd like to invite you to join us as a patron of our work here on YouTube, by hopping over to www.patreon.com slash Hugh Brownstone. We also want to let you know that you can now buy Hold That Thought t-shirts at our merchandise shop over at threadless.com. And we want to remind you, because you guys often ask for details about the gear we use, that, yeah, we have all those links down below, their affiliate links, as well as links to reviews, places, or people we reference. So be sure to check that out. Now that that's out of the way, Let's get into the details of our challenge, and let me set the context. In order to do that, I want to rewind to May of this year, when I had the honor, privilege, and joy of chatting with Anya Sear, director of the Henri Cartier-Bresson Foundation. Let's take a look at the opening three minutes of that conversation at the International Center of Photography in New York City to learn why Cartier-Bresson inarguably the greatest street photographer of all time, the man who essentially created the genre and is forever associated with the phrase, the decisive moment, actually hated that phrase and instead how he thought of his work. Here we go. Well, we're here and you're here in particular because in two days, a major retrospective of Henri Cartier-Bresson's work based on the book Decisive Moment, the American title, uh, which is what this represents. Now, of course, the American title is not at all what the French title was. No. What is that story? The French title is Image à la Sauvette, which could be translated as Images on the Run, like a little seller in the streets obliged to leave because the police wants him to leave. That's how Cartier-Bresson was thinking he was photographing in the street. Yes. So this title is perfect for him. And then in English, the, the, the publishers, Simon and Schuster, were, were thinking it was not enough uh, as an advertising title. It was not enough uh, a coup. It was not clickbait, we would call it today. Clickbait? Clickbait. Okay. Yeah. So it was not clickbait. And a uh, decisive moment is an expression which is in the quote by Cardinal de Retz. 18th century French, uh, that Cartier-Bresson has chosen to open the book. Il n'y a rien dans ce monde qui n'est un moment décisif. So they thought that maybe they should take this little part of the sentence as a title in America, the decisive moment. The problem with the decisive moment is that this expression is not false, but it's really narrow because there is not one decisive moment. There are hundreds, thousands of decisive moments. And also, there is not the right moment. There is your brain, your memories, your thoughts, psychoanalysis, poetry, everything which goes into a photograph. It's not only the moment. That's, that's so true. So Cartier-Bresson has been all his life called the famous photographer of the decisive moment. And he was not happy at all. <laughs> with that. Yeah. He was against it. Mm -hmm. And he was always scratching the title of the book when he was signing to, to write something else instead of decisive moment. So that's funny because of course these three three words, this the decisive moment, three words. Those three words have been a kind of definition of the way of Cartier Bresson was shooting, but it's absolutely against his wishes. Image à la Sauvette. Images on the run. It's a very literal thing. I wish I could show you the footage I saw of Cartier-Bresson doing exactly that at ICP. Though you have until September 2nd to catch the exhibit yourself. If you're 
anywhere near it, anywhere near the Bowery, anywhere near Manhattan. Just go. Anyway, as I listened to Anya, I thought to myself, stolen moments. And then, forgive me, I thought back to the opening scene of Zoolander, another one of those greatest movies of all time, where a reporter for Time magazine, played by Christine Taylor, opposite her real-life husband, Ben Stiller, who in turn plays vacuous male model Derek Zoolander, asks him how he feels about the belief in some Aboriginal cultures that a photograph might be taking a part of one's soul. Well, I guess I would have to answer your question with another question. How many Aboriginals do you see modeling? I love that movie. Now, quite by happenstance, just this past week, I met this lovely lady. She's part Lenape Indian and told me in a completely unrelated conversation that this too is part of the Lenape belief system. I find this intersection of Cartier-Bresson, the Lenape, and other indigenous peoples, because Zoolander's writers did not make this stuff up, fascinating. You'll recall, just a moment ago, Anya saying, your brain, your memories, your thoughts, psychoanalysis, poetry, everything which goes into a photograph, it's not only the moment, well, yeah. I'd go so far as to say, in a twist on the usual refrain, we are what we eat, for photographers, we are what we photograph, or perhaps more accurately, we photograph what and who we are. And reading is a really good way to gain insight on that. Let me read to you a passage from this wonderful book, Henri Cartier-Bresson, The Modern Century by Peter Galassi, and then simply encourage you in your own time to go to your local public library, borrow it, and learn more about who Cartier-Bresson actually was and how this affected his photography. Unless, of course, you already know it well. The world had changed a great deal between the early 1930s and the late 1940s, and so had Cartier-Bresson. At the end of 1935, aged 27, he had returned to his native Paris after five or six years mostly on the road, in Africa, throughout Europe, in Mexico, and finally in New York. The menace of fascism, Mussolini and Hitler, and soon Franco as well, was sharply felt throughout Europe, and like many other young idealists, Cartier-Bresson vigorously opposed it. He directed three documentary films in support of Republican Spain, and soon after he married in 1937, he took his first regular job at the newly founded communist daily, Cessoir. He worked there as a photo reporter until the outbreak of war in September 1939, when the newspaper was closed and he was mobilized. When the French army collapsed in June 1940, he was taken prisoner and subjected to forced labor in Germany. After two failed attempts, he escaped in early 1943. At the end of the war, before returning to New York to work on his MoMA exhibition, he made a film for the U.S. Office of War Information, OWI, about the repatriation of former prisoners of war and other displaced persons. These things, these experiences, along with the opportunity I've had recently to work with the brand new Leica M10P, and the adored by many Fujifilm X-Pro2, I'll put links to these reviews down in the show notes too, inspired me to, for the very first time, with relatively full understanding of what I was trying to do, steal moments, grab images on the run, which led me to an even greater appreciation of Cartier-Bresson than before. I wanted to find a concrete, enjoyable way to share this appreciation, this rekindled enthusiasm with you. So that is the genesis. That is the context of our street photography challenge. Read as much or as little of what I've suggested, or more, and then go out and capture images on the run. Risk being uncomfortable. Post your work to Instagram, making sure to follow me there. I'm at Hugh Brownstone. And when you post, include my handle so that I'll see it in my feed, along with the hashtag 3BMEP underscore IOTR for, yes, that, that would stand for images on the run, and the handle at BH Photo so they get to see it too. Try putting in a caption, although 
Cartier-Bresson hated writing captions, it's a good discipline. If you like, include the gear you used, not because that is important per se. Hey, if you want to shoot with an iPhone, that's fine by me. But because it may allow us to see patterns which generate interest in conversation. Lastly, if you are so inclined, put in a sentence or two about what you felt or what you learned from the experience. We'll review the images in a week, pick and announce the winner with full knowledges and apologies in advance that art is not objective and that our biases, Claudia's and mine, are not necessarily yours. But from where I sit, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is already a win for all of us.